going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I got a lot of catching up to do today because I didn't do a week three review video. Um, I'm kind of skipping like straight to week four. And the reason behind that is kind of because I, uh, I ended up posting that video earlier in the week uh, that was uh, like a day in the life video. So if you haven't seen that, um, I will drop a link to it here in the top corner somewhere. Uh, be sure to check it out because um, uh, it kind of took a lot of work moving the cameras around throughout the day with the very little bit of time I had trying to be pretty inconspicuous on camera and things like that. Um, so I would appreciate if you check that video out, but I'm gonna get into today's video now. Uh, so as far as week three goes, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna start at week three and then I'll work my way to week four, uh, kind of catch you guys up to speed here. Uh, so week three uh, started off with server-side concepts. Uh, this was really cool. We got to build kind of a chat client app and uh, learn how to uh, kind of start to persist data, um, at least on a server while it's running, uh, not using like a database or anything. So basically like one, as long as the server is running, the data will persist. But the moment that server resets or shuts down and turns back on, all that data is gone. So yeah, basically like it was a chat application that uh, as long as the server is running, all of the messages will persist. And basically like everybody in the class uh, hooked their uh, chat client up to the same server um, so like we could all like send messages back and forth with it it was it was uh, it's kind of complicated to explain but it was really cool though I had a lot of fun with that project I already talked about server-side concepts uh, so after server-side concepts midweek we got into uh, react JS uh, if you don't know what react JS is uh, it's basically a JavaScript framework for building user interface components uh, this is a great framework it's uh, a, a very substantial tool in your toolkit as a javascript or full stack developer um, this will really help you speed up the process of creating um, reusable user interface components and building out robust user interfaces so if you don't know react.js put it on your list because you definitely need to learn it and then following react uh, towards the end of the week primarily friday and saturday we started getting into node.js uh, this is where we started learning about um, building building our own servers, basically. Uh, you learn how to stand up a server locally uh, on your local host ports using uh, Node.js, um, Express, and things like that. Um, the, they really like make you do it the hard way first. Like we had to use bare bones Node first uh, before, uh, sorry, let me, let me rephrase that actually. We used bare bones Node Friday and Saturday. Um, which, if you don't know, is uh, pretty clunky compared to when you uh, start getting to use frameworks like Express uh, on top of it, um, because we didn't get into Express until the beginning of week four. So they really made us do this the hard way first, um, which there is an important lesson to be learned in doing that, because it really, uh, doing things the hard way first instead of how things are done now teaches you um, one, it'll help you if you ever have to work on a legacy code base that still does things the old way, but also it teaches you more about how things work under the hood, which is also really important to understand. Uh, I think this is actually like a correction. So week three actually started off with client side concepts. I might've said server side concepts, but yeah, for the server side concepts portion, uh, this is what I talked about with uh, building the chat application uh, where we could all communicate with each other, but the server uh, stuff was already kind of handled. We just connected to the existing server and then uh, had to, you know, bit, like focus on making the chat application functional um, to persist that data. Uh, but we did not actually stand up the server ourselves for this, this uh, exercise. This uh, standing up our own server started at the beginning of week four when we got into the actual server-side concepts and uh, things like uh, REST APIs and CRUD and uh, uh, if you don't know, create, read, update, delete, uh, very important. But yeah, that stuff started more on week four because that's like, that's all back-end stuff week four. But yeah, as I was saying, so week four started off with server-side concepts. Uh, this is when instead of bare bones node, they started letting us use Express.js to stand up servers and learn how to um, set up routes and things like that. And it's definitely like a night and day difference when you go from using bare bones node into using express. Um, you really see how much, <coughs> uh, how much of a helper express JS is because it gives you, it basically like creates a lot of shortcuts. Um, and like your code will be shorter because there's a lot of things 
happening behind the scenes that you don't really have to worry about when you're using that framework instead of using uh, just Node by itself. Uh, and then getting into midweek four, we started with databases. We used SQLite 3 and MySQL, basically stood up our own databases uh, locally, and then uh, uh, worked on connecting those databases to our applications uh, to persist data um, back and forth, whether the uh, servers were shut down or not. So um, that was definitely a, a, an interesting challenge. Um, the actual uh, the actual syntax for MySQL was not necessarily as hard as I thought it would be. Um, I still have some trouble with uh, like longer, like longer query commands and things like that. Because after after a point, it becomes kind of hard to follow, especially when uh, you're you're trying to do like inner joins or uh, you know grabbing information from multiple tables inside your database. It gets a little confusing and hard to look at. Um, but overall, I think the databases were surprisingly a little bit easier to me than I expected, which is good um, since the, the node section really uh, did a number on my brain, that's for sure. So it was kind of nice to have something that um, wasn't quite as uh, mind melting to deal with for a couple days. And then uh, the last sprint for week four actually just ended yesterday. This was covering authentication. Um, this was not necessarily like one of their their prime sprints um, as far as like importance of like you need to understand every single thing about this material uh, it was more about like an introduction to authentication and trying to understand like the basic principles of it and how uh, like a basic implement uh, implementation would be done um, this was quite challenging but me and my uh, partner my uh, uh, pair for the pair programming on this sprint actually did fairly well. I think we made it through probably about half of the test suite uh, before running out of time. Uh, which, I mean, if you've been through like Hack Reactor, like that's pretty good. I think a lot of these sprints you don't actually finish. Uh, it's more about uh, trying to learn as much as you can about the material in the sprint rather than trying to rush through it and actually finish it. Um, but yeah, this was kind of an interesting project, right? So they gave us um, like an already uh, existing application, basically. I'm not gonna talk much about what the application was, but yeah, so they gave us a, a, a basic application that was already uh, built and fully functioning. And uh, they included some helper functions and things like that, but basically we had to find a way to implement authentication on uh, this application, we had to add express routes for um, handling logging in, signing up, uh, things like that. And then we had to handle like the uh, like the hash keys for the password encryptions and things like that, uh, uh, cookies and like it was it was kind of a kind of a wild project. But there was a definitely a lot that I learned from this project. It uh, was um, definitely more than I expected, but uh, like I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I could like implement bare bones authentication by myself on an application at this point. But I definitely learned a lot, kind of about the the basic principles of authentication. Uh, they really do try to make you implement this authentication uh, in a very bare bones way. Um, they don't give you access to uh, like helper npm packages such as like cookie parser, passport js. Um, uh, I, I can't think of the other one off the top of my head, but there, there's some other like packages out there. <clears throat> uh, basically, like they give you like a hashing function, uh, and you know they they kind of like give you the, these uh, pre-written functions to handle the hashing and encryption of the the passwords and things like that. But it's up to you. <clears throat> sorry, um, it's up to you to figure out how to get these uh, to update in the database, to update the sessions uh, on the request. Um, update the cookies and things like that and uh, basically communicate all this information back and forth and then authenticate a user when logging in uh, allow the creation of accounts and things like that um, it's was, it was very complex we didn't actually finish it but we did get pretty far and I'm happy with that um, I definitely learned a lot which is the most important thing in this situation I think that that really wraps up all that I have to review weeks three and four um, of Hack Reactor or this coding bootcamp, whatever you want to call it. Um, I know they're all different, but this is my experience. Next week is week five. I'm looking forward to this very much because week five is what they call mini apps week. And in mini apps week, you're, you're no longer working in pairs. You're going to be working solo. 
and you basically uh, build one application a day for four days and then there's one two-day application project uh, at the end of the week. This, this is going to be a really fun week I think because this is where uh, you kind of get to uh, practice all the skills that you've learned in the previous four weeks and really start to put some of them together in ways that uh, you probably haven't done earlier in the course. And this is, this is really good because uh, day one of week six is the big technical assessment. Uh, this is basically kind of like the gatekeeper exam that uh, determines if you're ready for senior phase um, or, you know, whatever other um, <coughs> situations may come of that if you don't do well on it. But yeah, so uh, technical assessment, week six, day one. Uh, week five is really about putting all of these skills together and practice um, to prepare yourself for the big project uh, that is the TA, uh, which basically um, we don't know the details of the project yet, but as far as I know, um, you basically have to have the knowledge to build a full stack application in order to pass the TA, um, or at least to, to like do well on it. Um, you have to uh, be be able to find your way around well enough to uh, put together a full stack application or know how to work on the code base of one. But that's it for today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope that you're enjoying this journey so far as much as I am. Uh, if you like this video, please be sure to hit the like button. And if you like my other videos, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. Until next time, guys.